This is a network design where a work from home employee connects to the main headquarters via a VPN. But how does this all work? In this series of videos, I'm going to break down the key concepts that you can find in this network design. Basically, the aim for this network design is to make both the main HQ and the work from home employee connect to the ISP, but their connection together is done through the GRE over IPsec VPN. A virtual private network is important as to not leak any sensitive data from the company in the public network. The Cisco three-layer hierarchical model is a framework designed to organize and optimize network design. The three layers in this model are the access layer, the distribution layer, and the core layer. Each layer has its unique set of functions that contribute to the overall efficiency and performance of the network. The access layer is where end devices such as computers, phones, and printers connect to the network. In our network design, we see five PCs and one server connected to the access layer switches, marked as A1 and A2. In this layer, security policies, VLANs, and port-based authentication are implemented to control access and ensure smooth communication. For this particular design, I have set up the VLANs and shut down the unused access ports. The distribution layer aggregates data from the access layer and forwards it to the core layer. This layer handles routing, filtering, and sometimes the VLAN segmentation. It also provides a level of fault isolation, ensuring that issues in one part of the network don't affect the entire network. In our network design, the D1 and D2 are our distribution layer switches. Inter-VLAN routing is set up as to enable communication of an end device from a VLAN connect to an end device found in another VLAN. The switches also serve as a relay agent for our DHCP server, which is found in the access layer. This is denoted with the IP helper address command, and it is configured in every relevant VLAN. Spanning tree is also set up as, aside from redundancy, to decongest the behavior of forwarding Ethernet frames. For this case, VLANs engineers and doctors forward their frames to D1, while VLANs lawyers and pilots forwards to D2. I did not change the configuration for VLAN IT, so it forwards to D2 by default. Because distribution layer is a border between layer 2 and layer 3, layer 3 connections are also set up in the distribution layer switches. The gigabit Ethernet interfaces above it have IP addresses set up. OSPF is also set up, with VLAN interfaces set as passive, as they do not need to send any routing updates or participate in the routing process, which, in return, reduces network traffic. HSRP is also set up to provide redundancy in layer 3. Finally, the core layer is the backbone of the network. It's responsible for high-speed, high-capacity data transfer. Here, redundancy and high availability are crucial to prevent bottlenecks. This layer doesn't perform any packet manipulation. It simply gets data from point A to point B, which is why our core switches, C1 and C2, do not have switch port and spanning tree configured. Everything set up on these switches are concerned with layer 3 only, such as IP addresses and OSPF. Yes, even the ether channel between C1 and C2 is layer 3. This particular ether channel is called a layer 3 ether channel. The three routers above are for redundancy purposes when connecting to the edge router, the router that connects to the internet. To summarize, the Cisco three-layer hierarchical model provides a network that is fault tolerant and is scalable. Meaning, even if I turn off one of the switches or routers, the network still runs as intended, and it is not noticed by those end devices. This is helpful because when an enterprise cannot access the internet, a lot of time and money is wasted. Now let's take a look at the home network. It is much simpler than the network that we just looked at, but does not provide the same optimization. If one of the intermediary devices, like router, switch, or access point, is down, one or more of the end devices cannot connect to the internet. While this home network might not seem like the one you see at home, that is only because the routers found at home is basically a router, switch, and an access point being compacted into one device. And there you have it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content related to computer networks. To get to know more about me, you may visit my LinkedIn for more info. Thanks for watching.